you're struggling to gold the infamous IA-15 test, then get ready. In this video, I'll show you how to gold all 16 license tests for the International A license. Leave a comment below for which test I helped you get the gold in, and don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you out in any way. Now, let's get started with the first test. Aim for the apex at the start of IA-1, and break after this sign hits the edge of the screen. Trail break to cut past the curb in the next turn exiting as much to the inside as you can to approach the long hairpin. Turn in before passing this shadow, and aim to hit a double apex through the turn. I may not hit the inside, but what's most important is keeping up your speed, and getting on the power as early as you can for a high speed exit. Stick to the right before turning in at this break in the barrier. Aim to get your right tires on the curb, and turn in when the track straightens out. Cut over the curb and brake before you make contact. Aim for the inside of the hairpin as you barrel into it and get on the power early to exit wide past the curb. Push through the tunnel and finish the test. For IA2, approach the start of the S's on the right. Turn in at the tread line and lift to hit the apex, exiting in the middle of the track. Now for the next three turns, repeat this same technique. Approach wide, apply minimal brake and throttle inputs to gently rotate around the turn, and exit in the middle of the track between turns. When you approach the Dunlop curve, aim to take a line where you exit as wide as possible. Gently approach the inside of the track and exit on the left side. Break and turn at the 50 board to exit just shy of the AstroTurf. Break before making contact with the tread line and power out on the apex. Exit wide, and power straight ahead to finish the test. In IA3, slowly work your way left before braking when the tread line makes contact with the edge of the track. Aim to abuse as much of the track limits here and exit on the inside. Pump the brakes when turning in, and keep up your momentum around the left-hander before exiting the chicane. You'll know you're making as much power as possible when you hear the turbo kick in. Keep it close to the inside as you finish the test. Stay on the curb starting IA4. Keep to the left before turning in underneath the overhang. Exit on the right and stay there as you approach the next turn. Turn in just before the end of the curb and break in between the two treaded sections. Aim to swing around the inside of the turn before turning into the chicane at the end of the curb. Aim for late apexes through the chicane and exit on the right. Drive up the hill before turning in after passing the grandstands on the right. Keep the power down, aiming to hit the apex of the turn before exiting wide and finishing the test. In IA5, get behind the pace car after it crosses heading to the first turn. Maintain the toe until you reach the end of the guardrail and turn in. Break after crossing lanes and aim to hit a late apex on exit. Stick to the right for the pace car to give you the slipstream. Try to stay flat out through the turn and return to the left side of the track. Break after these yellow barriers leave the screen and aim to hit the next apex with a narrow line. Exit wide at the top of the hill to set up for the next section. Aim for the inside of the hill and mildly brake at the top to power out into the pace car. Stay wide to gently turn in and hit the apex, which is pretty late into the turn. Get back in the toe and brake before reaching the Motul banners. Take a U-shaped line through the hairpin and exit back on the right side. Turn in to exit wide and swing the car gently to aim for the next turn and power into it. Approach the next turn wide and turn in at the shadows to cut the inside. Break at the shadows and gently nudge the pace car to help you through the turn. 
get to the left before turning in at this part of the curb and braking shortly after. Power out to hit the next apex. Then, follow the pace car up the hill. Cut over the left side curb to then cut the next turn as much as you can. Break after leaving the shadows to exit as wide as possible and follow the pace car all the way down to the finish. For IA6, swing into the turn to exit close to the inside. Cut as much of the corner as you can while aiming for the apex of the turn afterwards. Cut the next turn again while braking to swing the rear of the car out. Aim to cut the turn again before powering out. Avoid hitting the apex here to approach wider into the next turn. Pump the brakes halfway through and gently rotate into the corner, powering out early to end deep and wide past the turn. Now stick to the left side of the track. Cut into the pit lane before braking and turning in the middle of the lane. Aim for the inside before powering out wide at the apex and driving down the hill to complete the test. Get to the right at the start of IA7. Turn in at the 100 meter board and brake just before reaching the 50 board. Let the car slip out as you brake and release the brakes slowly to not disrupt the balance of the car. Then get back on the throttle to exit wide. Get back to the left heading up the hill. Turn in as the track changes angle, aiming for a late apex. Aim to hit the next apex and brake at the edge of the shadows. Before reaching the crest, aim for the edge of this side while braking to set up for the next turn. Try to trail brake your way through the turn, utilizing slip angle to maintain more momentum through the turn. Exit wide and return to the right going down the hill. Here, you'll want to brake after losing sight of this sign. Also, this turn is tricky because it tries to suck you in on entry, so aim just outside of the apex when turning in. Lastly, keep your car as straight as possible at the bottom of the hill to avoid spinning out, and power out early to take as wide an exit as possible. Then, just finish the test. If maintaining slip angle is too difficult, the test can still be golded with an understeer approach. Brake a little later than mentioned for each turn, and focus on keeping the car straight when braking into corners. In IA8, make your way down the straight before braking at about the 60 meter mark. Keep your entry wide before turning in to hit the apex. Power out to take some of the curb and make your way to the next turn. Swing out a little before braking and turning to cut this turn, and power out early to take advantage of that extra track space. Then power through to the next turn, getting to the left on your way there. Brake at the 50 meter marker and aim to cut the turn here as well. Make your way back to the right side of the track before the next corner. Again, brake at the 50 board and cut the corner to maximize your momentum. Swing to the left and brake before losing sight of this sign. Aim for a late apex to stick to the right side of the track and turn in to take this turn as wide as possible while still making contact with the apex. And now just make your way to the finish. Stick to the right of the track starting IA9. Turn in at the start of the signs and break it where they change. Try to cut the first turn as much as possible before cutting back inside. Then use careful throttle inputs to gently maneuver through the next two turns, taking up as much of the curb as possible. Get over to the left side of the track before the next section. Turn in before losing sight of the wires above and break just before hitting the apex. Keep it slow to avoid hitting the wall and stick to the right before the hairpin. Break after passing the start of the curb and keep it slow to exit only to the middle of the track. Swing back to take the final turn as wide and flat out as possible, and head down the straight to complete the test. For IA10, stick to the left and follow the pace car. Watch the pace car's brakes and brake and turn when it lifts off it. Apex early to use up as much of the track when exiting. Follow the pace car down to the left-hander. Brake before the sign reaches the edge of the screen and get on the power after the apex. 
take a double apex approach into the long right-hander, slowing down halfway to get the rotation. Get on the curb and break before the watchtower hits the edge of the screen. Power out at the apex to exit wide. Then follow the pace car all the way through to the chicane. Break shortly after the pace car does and approach to the outside. Cut the turn to stay close to the edge of the track before using the upshift to cut the turn out of the chicane. Follow the pace car wide and gently swing around the uphill right-hander, trail braking on entry to maximize your turning angle. After exiting, Aim to place your car wide before the last left-hander. Brake into it to maximize your exit speed. Lift to hit the apex, then power out. Approach the next turn the same way, this time braking to place yourself here. Power out as early as you can while still hitting the apex. Then exit in the toe till you cross the finish line. In IA11, head down the straight and get to the left before the jump. After landing, turn in slightly between these shadows. Lift to speed up your rotation to hit the apex, then break straight to the inside after passing it. Hug the inside before powering out wide on the exit. Now aim to hit this section of the track and swing the car in when you reach it. Balance between hugging the inside and maintaining your momentum, and exit with a slight angle to reach the finish with the shortest line possible. Start IA12 by swinging in and hugging the inside, then exit on the left. Break at the shrub and slowly slide your way through the turns before the hairpin. For the hairpin, break to hug the inside in first gear by being light on the throttle to maintain grip. Get to the right before the next turn. Swing in at this banner and break shortly after. Again, stay low on the throttle while looking to the inside and get on the power once the exit's in sight. Break lightly and swing in after entering these shadows. Power halfway through to keep up your pace. Break to turn in after passing these plants. Close in on the inside before aiming for the next apex to exit to. Break and turn once you're there to swing out wide for a straighter exit. Then, shortly break and swing in at this plant before the barrier. And exit wider to power into the following turn's apex. Carefully swing around the penultimate turn to power out into the finish line. Take as straight a line as possible heading down the hill in IA13. Get to the right after the compression and brake before reaching the end of the shadow. Turn in at the sign to cut the uphill corner and power on after stabilizing. Brake at the crosswalk to swing around the turn. In the center of the track, Control break starting at this graffiti to hit the last left-hand apex late. Turn in to cut the curb and exit wide before heading down to the finish. Start IA14 wide going into the first turn. Turn in at the track intersection to lightly cut the turn. Break halfway between turns to cut in and over the next. Swing in after leaving the curb while staying in third gear to finish the test. Eighty percent the throttle, starting IA15. Approach wide into Sabine Curve and break at the graffiti. Power out at the apex and take an inside line at the next turn. Exit to the left behind the pace car. Break after passing the graffiti then power through to enter Hatzenbach. Approach on the right and brake before the crosswalk graffiti, and give the pace car a good nudge to keep yourself on the inside. Aim for late apexes through the S's before exiting wide on the final turn. Then return to the left before Holheishen. Brake at the end of the red graffiti and turn in to cut the turns through the section. Get in the slipstream, heading to Quiddlebach. 
get to the edge of the track before the crest and pump the brakes while turning at the pink graffiti. Use up as much of the track as possible when powering out and follow the pace car through the long and high speed section, giving it a few love taps while you're at it. At Spiedenkreuz, lift and trail brake through the cross to keep left before Arenberg. Then brake when the pace car does. Approach out in out for the turn and keep in the toe through foxhole. After the compression, exit wide and brake when you're parallel with the track. Turn in after passing the sign and get on the left. Brake at the crosswalk and exit into the middle of the track. Late apex the last left-hander and cut the inside of the right-hander to follow up. Exit behind the pace car before heading down to Metzgesfeld. Break at the white graffiti to swing around the first turn. Then, break after this shadow for the next. Exit wide to take the next turn narrow and end on the left. Aim for the inside of Kallenhard before breaking at the curb, and don't get on the power until after you've passed this barrier. Follow the pace car into the next section, and take a narrow line through the S-bend flat out. Down the hill, avoid the first apex and aim for the second before powering out up the hill. Break before this shadow, before Versiphon, and take up as much of the inside curb as possible before exiting with a late apex at the bottom. Follow the pace car through Breitscheid, breaking before the end of the curb depending on how close you are to the pace car. Enter ex Mule on the left and break in turn at the graffiti. Power out at the apex and keep in tow all the way to Bergwerk. Break at the sign and aim for a late apex to then power out of heading up the hill. Keep in line with the pace car until you reach Mood Curve. You'll then break at the end of the curb and exit to maintain as much momentum as possible. Continue following the pace car until Stahlstrek. Break at the apex of the left curb and power out halfway through the turn. Now follow the pace car up to Carousel. Brake at the end of the shadows here and stay on the rough section to maximize grip. And again, follow the pace car through the tight, fast uphill section. Brake at the start of the curb before the S-Bend to exit fast and wide before Hoa. Break at the start of the shadows and slipstream the pace car on exit. After the right hander, break at the end of this shadow for the left hander and cut the first and third turns for maximum pace. Now, approach the uphill right hander wide and break at the last long shadow. Get to the right and break before the yellow graffiti down Brunschen hitting both left-hand apexes and ending on the left before then breaking and taking the right-hander. Power out at the apex and head to YouTube corner. Break at the end of the left curb and power out early to exit wide. Afterwards, get to the right and break before the start of the curb while turning through ice curve. Keep in tow down the hill and break while in the air. Power down after the apex to keep up your pace through the uphill S's. Try to take this section flat out, but don't be afraid to lift to stay on track and survive. There's a lot of time to be saved, so don't worry about lifting too much as the gold time is fairly easy to make. Approach Falkenspans wider than I do before braking and turning to exit on the right side. Then, turn in at the end of the curb and swiftly brake slightly afterwards. Power out on the apex before continuing through to the mini carousel. Brake and turn at the dark asphalt to hit the bank section and power out halfway through. Maintain stability before heading up the hill. 
break mildly and drink Galkin Cup. At the top, turn in to hit the crest apex in order to maintain the inside line and keep on the power, something I did not manage to do here. Now, follow the pace car all the way through Dottinger Ho, giving the pace car even more love taps until you reach Tiergarten. Slow down at the first apex to give the pace car some space, then break at the shadows to make the chicane. Cut the inside of the first corner before hugging the next and ending left. Then break at the pavement change entering T13, power out at the apex, and stay behind the pace car to the finish. Start IA16 by getting to the left up against the barrier. Break once you're parallel with it and aim to cut into the grass at the end of Tetra Rouge. Be sure not to dip your tires into the sand on exit and continue down the Molsane straight. Keep your car close to the center of the track to maximize your speed and avoid the outer track limits as they will slow you down to some extent. For me, I've noticed by keeping the left half of my car on the center line, I tend to hit 235 miles per hour at the downhill section. After the bend, get on the left side of the track and brake before the curb on the right. Place yourself at this part of the track before turning in to aim for the apex at the barrier. Avoid second gear and upshift to fourth if there's any wheel spin before continuing to Indianapolis. Before the braking zone, get to the left side of the track. Gently turn in at the 100 meter board and brake at the start of the curb. Stabilize the car before turning in. Third gear will let you power out without wheel spin while heading to Armage. Get to the left and brake before reaching the gravel section. Again, use third gear or even fourth gear if there's still wheel spin to power out safely and finish the test. And with that last test completed, you've golded all of the IA license. Now with the Dome Zero, you've got a decent car to take to the MR Cup, which cannot be said for Nissan's 270R or R35 concept you receive with it. But hold on, this isn't over yet. We still have one set of tests left to gold, so click this video to find out how.